Welcome to the April 7th, 2020 episode of Reactive Consciousness, our in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Thakifan, and apparently we're doing an ASMR today? Yeah, that was weird. I mean, welcome back. <laughs> now, ask welcome me anything. <laughs> So uh, we have another wonderful, of course, episode of Reactive here for you. Uh, actually, a lot, a lot happened despite all of the COVID stuff, uh, you know, going on in the world. There's just been a lot of weird stuff. Plus, uh, you know, April first came by, so uh, that's always a trip. Uh, but uh, we wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about that first. Uh, just to make sure that we uh, we covered some of the things. I think uh, chief among them was uh, Platinum's <laughs> announcement, which was just kind of bizarre. Uh, did you guys see this one? No, uh, no, I actually saw very little in the way of April Fool's jokes. Yeah, they were kind of light this year. Um, I know that some uh, some some of them just like straight up stayed away from them this year, be just because of the sobering time we're in yeah and a couple of um, announcements i saw were on april 1st but the joke was that they were real yeah yeah that's always kind of a thing uh probably the most prominent one was the platinum f uh, announcement four. uh so uh this is of course the fourth announcement of the platinum four and they made it abundantly clear that it was a an april fool's joke uh so I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Moon Cresta and Terra Cresta. These are very old shmups that are kind of obscure in America. Yeah, never heard of them. Um, yeah, they're old shmups made by a company called Nichibitsu. Uh, they're they're the company that made Crazy Climber. Do you, are you familiar with Crazy Climber at least? I think so. that's no. when you're climbing up the building and people are throwing like yes. garbage down. Yeah, I remember um, yeah, yeah, Lollipop yeah, Chainsaw alluded to it. So even even um like like Atari Spider Man and a lot of uh, actually like sixteen bit and eight bit Spider Man games are very similar to Crazy Climber. Bart's Nightmare uh, had the level where you're King Kong or you're climbing up the building to stop King Kong Homer. Exactly, like that was basically Crazy Climber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like um Godzilla Bart and yeah. Even the uh, game yeah. Rampage, you sometimes have to watch out for guys throwing down objects. I mean that Rampage doesn't really play like Crazy Climber, but there's yeah, a little something there. Potted plants. You can, you can and, climb. Yeah, and you, birds, you climb and there's stuff that can fall on you. Eh. A bird, birds laying eggs on you yeah, and all kinds bullshit, of stuff. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and like, why, and you're just like some random dude climbing. Yeah, like, why are you like, even why climbing? Why I don't know. To, to say you can, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, anyway, they made the Shmup series called the, like, the Cresta series. And uh, they've only really made appearances in the United States like as of late. Um, which is kind of funny because like they're kind of very old shmups. They're like uh, like almost like early '80s, maybe even late '70s shmups. So, like they're, they're really they're 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 almost like um, like almost like Galaga, like or Galaxian, um, uh, just like right right around the turn of the '80s. Um, and they their announcement was they're making a third game called Soul Cresta. <laughs> That's actually pretty genius. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, well, we're making a sequel to this game that you don't care about. <laughs> yeah, at and, long last, it's finally yeah, happening. Exactly, I and it's not it. even their game, so why would they be making it? Um, <laughs> That's such so, a weird thing to just think of. Yeah, so they made like all this pixel art, and they made a video, and they had, like... Uh, the, the, the gimmick is just like kind of like in Galaga, where you can um, get two ships at once next to each other. Yeah. Um, no. In... In uh, Terra Cresta, you can like get multiple segments attached to you, just kind of like that. Okay. Um, that was like the gimmick of that game, and um, 
like Soul Cresta had like four like fuck off like things that you can attach to you. That's amazing. It's just, it's just like yes, Platinum's making this deal with it. Uh, but do they still uh, they... have slow motion when you perfect dodge? <laughs> yeah, it's just goofiness. And um, they they later clarified this is not our fourth announcement. Just like. We'll, we'll we'll come out with something real later. That just, would be hilarious, <laughs> though. Like finally, like, that, the, that the was it. Just Fuck completed. off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I I thought that one was quite funny. But I still kind of would play that. Yeah. It's yeah. Me too. Like... Honestly. <laughs> the difference in quality with those two games and this third one, like whoa, this one so much is way better. Exactly. Um, so then there, there, there. Hal Laboratory just made like a really goofy one. Uh, they announced Square Kirby. <laughs> it's just that is Kirby fun. Square now. Deal with it. <laughs> you just like you, you turn on the uh, the Nintendo game or the Game Boy game. How to draw Kirby? Vertical line, horizontal line, vertical line, horizontal. Line. You did it. <laughs> you did it. Did it. Did it. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that one was, was particularly funny. They they had, um like, Square Kirby's Epic Yarn as well, uh, which I thought nice. was really funny. Uh, so he's just, yeah. like, a square... It, it, it's, like, a square made out of yarn. Yeah, there's, so like, no funny. difference in gameplay at all. Yeah, none. Uh, that's why it was funny. I, I, I like the ones where it's just goofy bullshit. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so um, the next one was Box Boy Final Box. You guys should click on this. This is hilarious. Yeah, I, I uh, so, I'm curious so, now. Um, Box Boy is, of course, like a puzzle series by um, by Nintendo, and uh, they are making Final Box, which is a Final Fight looking Box Boy game. That's genius. <laughs> I'd play that. And you can beat people up by extending your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I see it. You turn into like a horizontal like Tetris piece. Yes. But your face is still where your head should be, so you're not extending even... your face. You're just extending something from your face. They even have animated gifs of like of the character like making all of his moves and stuff. It's really funny. It's genius. Uh, and, and wearing and, like suspenders and beating the crowd. Oh over. yeah, yeah. It, it it's genius. It kind of oh, looks like dude, a, look, look at the the crossing sign. Like the don't walk. It's like a little box, dude. It's like a square yeah. guy. Yeah, no, they put a lot of effort into this one, and I would play this. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That reminds me. I'm actually me. a little disappointed. I actually did something like that once, where I I made like a fake uh, Streets of Rage Mario character. I'll have to show Ooh, you that, like animated nice. and everything. I, I need that. Does he I have Grand Upper? He has Grand Upper. Oh my god! <laughs> Everybody has Grand Upper. First of all, Is, um, does he have Beba <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Show you Ripa. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I I like this one in particular. Um, then Tekken had a pretty goofy one where they added the game's director, uh, uh, Katsuhiro uh, Harada, into a, as a selectable character. If this was like the year 2000 on like the, the Saturn of the Dreamcast, I would actually believe that that was real. Yeah, yeah, that was the time for that. <laughs> like back in like uh, Fighters Mega Mix, where just any bullshit made it into the game, it was like the best thing ever. Yeah. Uh, that one was pretty funny, but like still, that that would be cool. Yeah, all right? like even um, in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, like you could play as like the Japanese Sony cat mascot. Like there he is, he's just in there. Uh, uh, the guy from Dead or Alive would definitely put himself in his own game. I would, I would never. Yeah, put that I can, him. I can believe that. <laughs> um, Rainbow Six Siege was very funny as well. So they were like, okay, Rainbow for real this time. <laughs> <laughs> Click on the video. It's 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 really funny. They decked it all out in like Lisa Frank. Oh, it's uh, literal rainbows. Bullshit. Yeah, That's fantastic. like everything is cute and like you know pink. You know, I'll tell you this. I've read the book, the Tom Clancy book, Rainbow Six, and uh, it was not covered in rainbows. <laughs> it was a code name, actually. Well, it was it was because they were from different countries, right? And that wasn't yeah, that yeah, the idea. yeah. But um. Yeah, yeah. But there, there were no literal rainbows, so sorry. This this joke falls flat. There are no rainbows. It's not how it works. Uh, it was quite funny. Oh my uh, god. He, he even has a Jean-Claude Van Damme pose at the end. That's perfect. That's yeah, it's really good. Uh, IGN had a, had a, a specific Nintendo Direct uh, where um, everything is released on Switch. Literally <laughs> everything. Genius. Just everything. <laughs> uh, that was pretty funny as concept. That is clever. Uh, I, I am a 8-bit announced a 6 uh a 6 LP uh Pong vinyl set. <laughs> yeah, that's that's brilliant. Even Cuphead is like 
three or four vinyls. Like Pong has more music than that. <laughs> like, they they what? said um, <laughs> 200, 250 uh, minutes of Pong yeah, just like beep, ambience. Boop, beep, <laughs> yeah, and you need to it switch was, discs. Like really one good. disc isn't enough. Like there's only two sounds in the whole game, as far as I know. Maybe even yeah. one sound. Yeah, no. no f- it, and for the, the rest sound. of it, flip the side B and then put another LP in. Uh, and Wait I had to put this in, in there. This is not uh, gaming related, but uh, it, it, we've talked about oh, this comic before this. and this how good great. it is. Yeah. Uh, so Nancy is surprisingly the best uh, like newspaper comic around yeah, uh, by like, Olivia Wilde. We, we've Wild. talked about this before. Or Olivia like, James, Nancy's I'm sorry. Nancy's a comic that's been around forever. And, yeah. you know, I used to kind of idly read it, like, when I would read the comics. I just I would just cover everything, so I would read the Nancy too. And it's not usually funny, and oftentimes it doesn't even have jokes. It's just kind of schmaltzy. It's like, oh, yeah. the kid's acting cute, and her aunt's like, what? I didn't expect that. And there, yeah, it's, it's like it's Family like the, Circus. I don't know. Like, you know yeah, it's, if, if it's I like... could condense the entire comic strip into one word, it would be harmless. Like, oh, Grandma enjoys reading this, and having some nostalgia but yeah advice as you mentioned newer nancy is fucking hilarious it's like actually <laughs> funny <laughs> a- a- nice. ever since olivia james took it over like two years ago it's been like the best comic strip i've read since that Calvin meta Pops, basically. fourth wall breaking oh my god that was how did uh, you know i was gonna steal the cookies i read ahead in the comic and so you do it like what like, it's it's brilliant <laughs> it, it, she like hops out of the frame and like <laughs> it's yeah, wild. It was, like it's it's insane it's nice. it it's it, when I read that, I was like, "Is this the real Nancy?" Because at the time, it was like a br- it was like a brand new changeover. Well, yeah, to when, Olivia. when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, the art style is different." I thought it was like a fan parody comic or something. I yeah, could, I, I couldn't it believe it was the real thing. Too. Yeah, it was. It's insane. So, um, also, Nancy has gotten to be well known for the April first uh, ones. It's not really an April Fool's thing. It's more like they just do a, like a special. Yeah, it's um, just even weirder. <laughs> yeah, it's even weirder than usual. And every year it's fucking great. And it this <laughs> one was really good. Um, like like this that's where uh, Sluggo is lit is came from. Like that <laughs> that that meme Sluggo is lit came from the very first one that Olivia James did wow. with with Nancy, which was like. Only I think a month into her tenure. It's amazing. Um, so <laughs> this one is a, all about how everybody in the uh, uh, in the Nancy universe is a vampire. <laughs> yeah, it's like you gotta be careful. Like keep away from them. Sluggo's Sluggo is not uh, d- has hair on top, but the two dots behind his ear are actually bite marks from a vampire in 1939. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's like how do you what? <laughs> And uh, like this has got to does... be the 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 comic writer's dream, right? Like she's oh, been writing, so she's been reading these comics. Like, man, what I would do if I had control of this, and now she does. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, who gets so to do good. that? It's amazing. So, um, yeah. So let's see here. Um, so the, the third one's really funny. Why does Nancy's hair have spikes? Yeah. This is a common misconception. These are actually spikes from the collar of the vampire cloak she <laughs> she wears at all yeah, times. That's so good. <laughs> and does does <laughs> does Nancy have any mortal weaknesses? It has obviously like a stake, holy water, and a cross scribbled out. And it says, <laughs> yep. you almost got me there, Vampire Hunters. You almost got me. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> this is a fucking Nancy comic. Like, never in a million years would I have thought that Nancy would even be, like, laugh out loud funny, let alone it's, this crazy. It's fucking bananas. I <laughs> love it. And every time, and nobody ever believes me. Like, I told my brother, I was like, uh, like the best newspaper comic going on is Nancy, and he, he just laughs at me. I was like, I'm well, not. Yeah, because everyone who's read Nancy stopped reading it like 15 years, like when they were kids. They were like, okay, I get what this is. There's, they there's didn't no, even like there's it no back ongoing storyline. There's no real jokes. It's just cute kid and an adults like, oh, how precocious! Like every time, or like sometimes it'll be like, I remember there was an entire comic where it was just like it was the Fourth of July or something, and it was just lyrics from some patriotic american song on the radio for all three frames and and fritzy's just listening to it with like a tear in her eye and it's just like oh how nice i i feel i feel warm inside that that's the comic and like and new nancy is fucking hysterical like it's like out of nowhere it's really good uh i don't know like 
and it's frequently like um like very uh it's very creative like yeah. constantly uh like i don't know how she gets her ideas but it, it's it's really really fucking yeah. good uh, so I just I just wanted to bring these up. Uh, did you guys have any other April Fool stuff that you spotted? I, I, I these were like the big ones that I that I saw. Yeah, if I, I mean I made a because I, I, I have made like a an April Fool's one. comic, but you know. Hmm. Oh, did you? Yeah, I'll have to show you afterwards. Very nice. Ooh. I'm excited. Um, because the only April Fool stuff I have is what I mentioned. Because the joke mm-hmm. was that they're not April Fool stuff. So one of them was uh, Rick and Morty because they've done oh, sure. April Fools before. Like they aired episode one of like season three or four or something like all day on april 1st like this is your chance it's like all day and this time they announced on april 1st that the second half of season four is coming back on may 3rd and i i think that's legit because they yeah. just do april fools now and the other thing was uh rogue legacy a brilliant uh brilliant roguelike game that kind of plays like a metroid game sort yeah. of but um it's a lot of fun and the developer tweeted like the number two or something like that, or like a picture of the title of the game with like a two, or like it's coming, and everyone and everybody responded like this had better not be a joke, and it looks like it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah, no, there there are um, screenshots I think. Yeah, because that game is great. Uh, like, nice, I swear nice. to God, if you're joking, but like no, no, we're we're good. <laughs> yeah, I was really happy that the first one came to the Switch because it was like a long time coming. Um, yeah, I mean, and it, that's it was like really the perfect like system the... for it. Yeah, because I remember like you had the, like the Vita version, I think, because that was the yeah. way the portable way to play at the time. I just had it on yeah. PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that version was good because it had crossover with uh, the PS3 version at the time. So like, yeah. it, 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 it you could you could do cross save, which is pretty cool. Yeah. At this point, but, I got the uh, yeah. limited run um, PS4 release. Mm, really cool, really cool. Great game. I mean, it, it goes is. right in line. It goes right in line with all the other really good roguelites out there. I unlock uh, just about everything. I'm only missing some really hard bullshit stuff that would be just for, like, personal satisfaction. Yeah, beat, beating those, um like, hard versions of the bosses. That's exactly oh, yeah, what difficult. I'm talking about. I'm yeah, missing a bar or two of those, yeah. It's fucked up. I, I can only beat, like, one of them, I think. I, be- um, I, think the... I, I beat one, maybe two. But what would you say, Pokemon? The way I did it was basically using uh, the guy who could turn invisible and just, like, do critical hits like crazy. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the, the way I beat the regular final boss uh, was just, like, using the time stop guy. I'm like, man, this is easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that helps so much. <laughs> yeah, you can't use special abilities, I think, on the on the special boss or something like that, Some of those like special that, right? bosses just play differently. It feels a little weird. Yeah, Wait, yeah. I think but... you couldn't? It might I, don't, I don't remember. I just remember, like, some of them just felt different. I forgot why, because it's been years at this point, but yeah, me it too. got crazy. Well, moving on from that, uh, it, it, there's been quite a roller coaster ride with Cooking Mama. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so uh, apparently there were rumors going around that, um, it, well, one of the things that was announced with the newest Cooking Mama was that it was going to have some kind of blockchain capability, um, and uh, like people were, uh, it got taken off of the the eShop recently. And people were speculating that it was because that you know the, the, there was a possibility that it was a a, a cryptocurrency miner, but uh, well, that's since been de- debunked. Yeah, just one uh, one thing they thought was really suspicious really though weird. was that like if this were EA, I would have believed it instantly because they're <laughs> just pointlessly selfish assholes. But apparently, the Cooking Mama thing had like an always online thing, and it's like it's Cooking Mama. Like, why would you need to be always online? You know, Go it's like it's like when EA released the new SimCity, which is single player only, and it's always online because fuck you, we don't we assume everyone's a pirate. But Nintendo doing it feels bizarre, or maybe whatever the company is, not Nintendo specifically. Yeah, but probably the weird. company itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's got really be, weird stuff. Yeah. There's got to be like a reason for it, but like of course, as a consumer, if you have no idea, it seems very suspicious. Yeah, lots uh-huh. of pirates for the Cooking Mama games, I'm sure. Uh- <laughs> Apparently, there's some kind of weird legal battle going on, which I also believe because this isn't like released by Majesco, you know, Cooking Mama's originally original IP holder or anything like that. It's it's being released by some other company, so um, I, I I would think it, it's a janky game to begin with. So like it, 
you know, it, it probably has all kinds of financial trouble to begin with. So based on the cryptocurrency, know. though, I saw some really funny fan art for Cooking Mama. Like, <laughs> like you know how she's always got this like big bright smile on the covers, yeah. whether she's cooking or babysitting. I saw sure. her like in like a miner's outfit with like a pickaxe, which is really <laughs> fucking funny, like the data mining thing. Uh, there was also another one where like cops are escorting her out, and she still has the big bright <laughs> smile, but with like like a sweat drop. It, it's really funny. <laughs> nice wow people got on this so fast yeah, oh dude no, you have no idea how fast fan artists are man it's they, insane man they are speed of life fast it's crazy in 10 you know, minutes you can see fan art of the latest pokemon game before it, like the nintendo like didn't even finish announcing the game there's already like oh, sure post it's crazy and, and it's not just like a, a doodle 42. either it's like full-blown colors shading yeah. and you're like jesus relax yeah <laughs> And rule uh, rule forty two as well. Yeah. Oh, dude, there's there is so much, so much porn, man. It's, 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 isn't it 34? It's thirty four? It's thirty four. Sorry, forty two is the the answer to the life, the universe, uh, the question of the life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. I forgot. Speaking of which, by the way, I'm kind of glad people have stopped like making that joke. Like, well, what's the answer? Forty two. Like, I, I haven't seen that as much. And you know, yeah. you know what? Good. You know, it's played out. I'm just saying that because like, you're um, a teacher. Hitchhiker's Guide isn't really in the current lexicon. Well, that, that's um, another thing. Yeah, not yeah. like it's not new anymore. Not everybody's all over it. Like it's you, good omens. It's, it's all it's about like, good omens right now. <laughs> yeah, like like the kids these days aren't quoting Monty Python all the time because they didn't have it on TV like constantly when they were kids. You know, so it's like all yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. People forget that there were only like twelve episodes of uh, like Mr. Bean, and that's all we had. <laughs> yeah, same goes for the uh, the British The Office. It was like one season and a Christmas special or something. Yep, yep. Yeah, it wasn't long. Nope, nope, nope. All right, moving on from that. Uh, Gearbox software is shitty. We knew this, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? what is this in recon for? This isn't news at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reiterating it because they're they're no good. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... next item. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Um, so uh, apparently they, um, they are... Uh, opting not to pay promised bonuses to all the people that basically worked on Borderlands 3. Um, just because they're a bunch of dicks, I guess. Because yeah. they they figure that they're not making enough money this year, but yeah, they already promised these people. They can. And Borderlands 3 um, has been revealed to be like far and away the um, uh, like their biggest hit uh, of all time. So like mm. they did their job. They They made a good, successful game. Um, but yeah, the the royalties and all that other stuff uh, will not be paid to the people who earned it and were promised it. So well, I hope um, there's like a class geez. action lawsuit over this if it had been put in yeah. writing before. Oh, I, I I hope I hope they they all fucking quit. I yeah. mean, like 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 I I know that's a tough thing to do. Um, if you're not getting paid like, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, they they they. they and all these people are, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, what happened in Christmas Vacation, uh, you know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Like, all, all these people, like, um, like, n- you know, planned on this money. They all they all yeah, plans, yeah, like, yeah. you know, yeah, vacations yeah, yeah. Or, or additions to their homes, um, things like that, you know, um, things that they were going to do with the, those funds that they were promised. Ima- imagine being told, this is the bonus that you're going to get, and then all of a sudden, no, fuck you. And then, yeah. Yeah. It's awful. We should visit um, their studios with baseball bats and just, you know. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, I'm just waiting for there to be blood. Like, I'm, I'm going to get my payment one way or another. <laughs> Jeez. Seriously. But, uh, yeah, Gearbox has um, recent, uh, recently in the last, like, year or so uh, has been, like, really showing its true colors about a lot of, sh- a lot of stuff. Um, Most and, video um, game companies probably are fucked. <laughs> Yeah, but this one in particular, mostly due to the management of uh, Randy Pitchford. So yeah, um, uh, th- it seems to all be kind of stemming from that, um, from from one place. So, um, you know, like shit, shit rolls downhill. If you had a, a really like, you know, um, ethical person on the top, it, it would all flow down that way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it really yeah. really sucks. Um, it's a fucking shame, really dude. I hate that. I hate hearing stories like that. Man, it makes me yep. really angry. Mm-hmm. It's awful. It's awful. Um, re- really bad stuff. Moving on from that, uh, we had a couple really big re- releases. Uh, Persona Five Royale. 
Um, Royale with cheese? A, Perfect. Yeah, with I cheese. think it's just yeah. Royal. <laughs> um, no, it, 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 it's it's French. He, he he knows all about it. Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. In Canada, yeah, they I don't use the, uh, the in Canada they use the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> We're crazy like that. I heard Persona Three Five Royal like uh, they really kind of did a good job with like updating the graphics, updating the maps, updating a few mechanics. It seems like they did a good job on it. I guess yeah. that would make sense because base Persona Five was on PS3 as well as PS4, but this one's sure. specifically been designed for the new system. So yes. I guess they have more leeway of looking good. And there's also some fast travel stuff that they added with like a grappling hook. Um, apparently, quality of life improvement and stuff. Yeah, yeah, quality of life stuff. So this is the version to get um, from yeah. pretty much everywhere that I've read. Um, you know. So just like uh, you know, Persona Four Gold and before it, and you and know, Persona P3, Three Fez, three, or Fez? no, P Three P is is the is the version to play. Actually, but also, but that, also Fez P Three P isn't that um isn't that like a different version of Persona Three? So the way that it goes is that um, Fez was the original game, but they added a coda to the end of the game, like okay. a, a whole new. Uh, part of the game at the end that apparently is inconsequential and worthless, so don't do it. Oh, um, yay! But Persona 3 Portable, which was the PSP r- remake, yeah, yeah. Uh, added a ton of quality of life improvements, including uh, the option to play as a female main character, um, and also uh, they they toned all of the exploration down really uh, so you, you know you don't waste as much time like walking through the school and stuff like that. You can okay. just click on points of interest and things like that. So, um, yeah, P three P is it's considered like the best version of Persona three. So, okay. Um, but uh, like because it, it doesn't even include the the Fez stuff and nobody cares. Like, oh wow! It, it, literally, like <laughs> it, it, it it's kind of like watching like. Um, you know, like a Gaiden episode of something, you know, it's just like kind of a waste of your time okay. or, you know, like it, it's, it's like a side story that has no consequence. So, gotcha. Okay. Uh, um, moving on from that, uh, Resident Evil three remake gets its release and it's, uh, the opinions very, very wildly on. This. Yeah. It's one very of, polarized. Yeah. One, one opinion I've read was that it doesn't do, great service to the source material but it's a good game in a vacuum uh one thing i heard was it's surprisingly short despite having a fast travel system you know like little things like that but i don't know you got the you got the dodge mechanic like the original resident evil 3 introduced so the gameplay is a little better for that reason like that's like resident evil 2 was going authentic by not having that so i suppose re3 brought it back again the biggest complaint that i heard and this sounds pretty legit uh, is that RE3 uh, it, it has some locations stripped out of it. Um, rather than adding <laughs> locations and adding life to it, they streamlined it. So it, it, they, it feels like they took parts of the game out of it. Yeah, um, well, 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 it's spe- like... Spe- um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry, so it's like less of a tour and more like a... Like, instead of exploring the city around being like, oh, this is Raccoon City, it's more like, uh, go this way and do that, I guess? Yeah, it's more like a funhouse ride. Um, okay, like okay. The, the, the Nemesis uh, seems a lot more scripted than Mr. X did in the RE2 remake. Um, like, he, he'll he he'll pop out in Ooga Booga at you, you know. <laughs> uh, you know yeah, at, it was kind of like at, the original game, it was points. very scripted. Although, one, one thing I will say, speaking of streamlined, this is probably my biggest complaint. I heard that they removed, like, the various choices you can make, like, help Nikolai or Mikhail or whatever, or, oh, yeah. know, and there's there's one way to go, which wouldn't really bother me if they greatly enhanced what was left, you know? If you could only go the one way, they make it good, because a lot of Resident Evil 3's replay value was choosing differently next time, so I'm curious yeah, as yeah. to how they handled what they do have. This is a shame because this really is like one of my favorite uh, favorites of the series. Like I, I really mm-hmm. like the original version of RE3. Uh, if uh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I, I pr- out of all the tank control games, other than like the first um, remake, you know, the remake of the first yeah, game, the GameCube remake, yeah. Um, this might be my like second favorite of the tank control games. Okay. Uh, and I, I because I just love like the the 
you know, a a somebody menacing you throughout, like yeah, Mister X, but all the time. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Again, in Resident Evil Three, it was scripted, but like seven encounters like that's a bunch in a three-hour game <laughs> yeah not only that but like there's all kinds of rewards for beating him and yeah, it was yeah. very difficult to do so um like there, it, it just was a lot of fun i have a lot of fondness for um a bad guy that evolves over time as well so yeah. like I, I i just love that kind of stuff because it, I, I like having an arch nemesis you know i, well, I, I really do of, in a video speaking game. of rewards for beating him uh you know the final reward assuming you beat him every time, was infinite ammo for pick a gun. You know, you could apply it to a gun. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember if, that. But if you didn't, didn't want to deal with that or whatever, th this is one thing that I'll admit was a little weak on the original PS1 games part, but there was a, a pretty cool mercenaries mode that you could play for cash, and you could accumulate cash over time until you finally unlock infinite ammo for everything, which defeats the purpose of beating Nemesis every sure. time. That felt a little weird. But it was still cool to unlock that ability, but I don't think... The remake has mercenary mode it has that multiplayer stuff i don't give a shit about <laughs> yeah it, it's a I shame will, um i will say one ahead. positive about the re uh, about the remake though um they have some really really cool posters yes yeah like in -game. yeah um all kinds of posters uh with capcom like uh, fan service. Yeah, capcom yeah. loves the fan service one thing really threw me not in the final game but in the demo one of the the posters was for the full release of Resident Evil 3, which makes sense from an advertising standpoint, but, like, this isn't being cute. Like, a poster of Frank West, like, it's a Capcom thing. Maybe it's a movie in this game's universe. I don't know. This is, this is another Capcom property. But it really feels weird to have Jill walking around town and see a poster of her for a video game that she's in. It's like, what? It's a Double Dragon movie arcade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, um, I I thought that the the posters was really cool. Like, um, they have like a Doctor Wily, and yeah, I uh, saw that one. And Doctor Wily, yeah, that was amazing. Um, I yeah, wonder if they still there's... have the DeLorean lying around. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, what, what, this is, there's a science forum. There's like a, a few like fake comic books and movies too that I saw. It looked like um there was like some streets street uh street fighter stuff going on and Not just surprising. some like some other other goofy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Resident Evil Two so, had that one place called Arocas, which is Sakura backward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I really like uh stuff like that, but uh I I. I'm I'm gonna end up buying this game either way, but I could tell you this that I really love RE2 remake. Uh, I I thought it was a, like I I've played a good chunk of one uh, of one character of the game of, of Claire, and um I, I've played up until the lab, so, oh, so you're you know there. big big chunk of the game. So um I thought fighting like trying uh, being menaced by Mr. X is one of the like like most off-putting things i've ever experienced in a video game and i loved it for it it's yeah really, they did really the good. they did an amazing job at, at like really making him randomly walk around the, the 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 office and not just when like he spawns around you or you enter a room yeah. but really he's really randomly walking around he's always there he's it's clomping yes yeah, terrifying yeah. he's got those heavy it, feet it's the clomp and it's, it's, and it's not clomp. just it's not just like a sound effect and then he appears in the room he's always there and it's amazing yeah, that's yeah. terrifying yeah, yeah, and you're you're always in close quarters with him, so it's not like you could really dodge him easily. You have to yeah. you have to make do with what space you have. Yeah, um, yeah. Even very in the difficult. original game, like the first time you meet him is in a hallway. Like where, and he's got a wide punch. Like where are you gonna go? It was the worst. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's really really good. I I I it was one of my favorite video game experiences, and it was a remake of a really good game. I, it's just like I, I it's like Little Chef's Kiss. So yeah, like yeah. as far uh, as yes. I'm concerned with the tank control games, it's kind of a toss up between Resident Evil Two and remake of Resident Evil One. Like they are both really damn good for different reasons. Yes, absolutely. Um, moving on from that, Final Fantasy IX uh, got an update on PC that deleted the whole game. <laughs> what? Yeah, this what? was a, like a programming error that was quickly fixed in like a few hours. But like, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> wow, funny. that is incredibly yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, it's just really goofy. Uh, moving on from that, uh, there was nothing much else to say other than <laughs> no, that was, that was like, it. All right. Funny. <laughs> um, so 
uh, Lotus actually lo uh, linked me to this one, and this one seems very credible. Uh, so SNK Gals Fighters, uh, which is the Neo Geo Pocket Color uh, female combatant-only uh, SNK fighting game. Yeah, it's the predecessor um, to the, the heroine fighting game on the Switch. Exactly. Uh, so, um, and the boss is Iori and Drag. Um, yep. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, it got rated for Switch in Korea. Um, I find this very credible because um, usually uh, these ratings in Korea um, have sh shown to be fruitful, number one. Uh, and usually that's an indication that the West is getting it, too, uh, because they don't get, like, stuff this, at the same time as japan they yeah. get it kind of on their own uh, more more in a line with uh western releases and um i also believe it because the emulator that runs samurai showdown like the neo geo pocket color version on the switch is way too detailed to be wasted on one game yeah um the emulator is really full featured and the best version of that game including its original hardware um if this is the case, this is one of the best games. Uh, it's not the Mar uh, SNK versus Capcom game, um, but that would be significantly harder to, to release. Yeah. But uh, this is definitely a really good game, um, and also a unique one, because uh, they didn't have too many games where they, they did this kind of thing. Um, there's also a couple characters in there that never um, also like showed up again. Huh. Um, like they're they're only playable in that game. So, oh yeah. Uh, one one of the characters' uh, girlfriends uh, is only playable in this game, I think. Um, so I I just I'm I'm really amped for that because um also you could play these games um two player on one screen unlike you could with the original game. Uh, yeah. You would need two systems, two games, um in order to play them. So uh, you could play this just like it were any other fighting game, which is and they're really good. Um, <laughs> we take on from things this, for this... granted, huh? Like, I mean, oh yeah, yeah. You say that today, like, oh yeah, you need like two two consoles, two games to play this one thing on like a fighting game. People would be like, what yep. are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a the really good fighting games, and there are a lot of them for that system. Um, like a a, a lot of them. So like, it, 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 good luck finding another person that has that system, let alone like the same games as you. Yeah. Um, uh, and and also having a link cable for a system that was out for maybe six months in the United States, um, I don't even know if it made it to Canada, uh, but it, it, it's it's crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on from that, uh, <laughs> this is also kind of funny. Uh, in the line with uh, Final Fantasy's blunder, um, Toei uh, Tokusatsu uh, World Official YouTube. Uh, this is the um, you know the super uh, Japanese superhero shows. You know, kind of like. Power yeah. Ranger ish kind of stuff. Like um, Sentai, you mean? Yeah. Well, there like is Kamen Sentai, but Tokusatsu is just a, a various bunch of transfer. Like, like, did you ever see the show T VR Troopers? Uh, no. Mm, okay. Well, I was going to say because it, 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 it took basically... footage from like three Tokusatsu shows. Tokusatsu oh, okay. just means superhero, I think. Okay, um, okay. So, so basically like Ultraman, but not Ultraman, you know, stuff like that, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, There's it's a lot of stuff kaiju. I haven't heard of, and they got episodes like one and two with English subs, like official English subs, probably for the first time ever of like a ton of shows. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so they have like a bunch of stuff from like the 60s and 70s and early 80s in there. Um, yeah, and but, this, and uh, this, this YouTube page went up like like yesterday, like on, on Saturday. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So t or Sunday, Toei, whatever. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Toei is also known for being particularly uh, very stringent about uh, YouTube use. Yeah, it's um, you know, for and everything. Copyright mm. strikes. So um, they ended up copywriting, right, striking itself into oblivion <laughs> right after it yeah. launched. The, <laughs> like the, the channel was restored. They probably got that settled within a few hours. But it's like maybe you've learned it's a hilarious. lesson, Toei. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you like like you 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 are so stringent that you, like you even can't post your own shit. Um, wow, that is yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, no, they're they're notorious too. Like um, like oh, people man. just like to show you know like uh, clips so they can they could say that they love the show you know or do a top ten list yeah, or well, something. They were a real thorn in the side of Dragon Ball Z abridged, where there is zero of the original audio and most of the video is being manipulated. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it's crazy. Um, moving on from that, um, this was actually really cool. So uh, Ninja Gaiden, um, the the game for NES, also had a port to the PC Engine. Uh, it's known for not being quite as good as the NES version, but it's still kind of cool that it exists. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so <clears throat> apparently this version of the game has, has its own unique translation, uh, English translation, and it's official, and it was like locked in the game um like through a button combination you could get the english version of the game oh that's oh. crazy uh so uh very few people actually knew about this even within the pc engine community but apparently it was like it's really cool and it has its own like unique translation like it's not the same as the the one on on, on the nes and what what somebody did was they they hacked it so that you know it it plays the official English translation from the start. That's pretty great. Um, so really the work didn't need to be done to hack the game it just, or, or, you know, have, have yeah, English characters added. Yeah. It's yeah. just a convenience. Yeah. But it's still really neat. Um, just, just a cool thing. Um, Deadpool is also in Fortnite now. <laughs> Cause why not? Just, why yeah. Not? <laughs> I just throwing that out there. Um, also, I, I just wanted to talk a, a little bit about, uh, some, some cool fan stuff going on. Uh, a guy named Furtech who made the, uh, the video out, um, uh, thing for, um, the Virtual Boy. It's called the Virtual Tap. And he also made the, um, the Neo Geo, uh, FPGA core, uh, for the Mr. Project. Uh, he's working on the PC engine, uh, with John McMaster's uh, for for Mister, so Mister um, is an FPGA, a multiple FPGA system. I just thought it was cool because um, that that project is getting more and more like really accurate emulation um, every single day. So I just wanted to quickly mention that. It's an emulator those lines, for the PC Engine, then. Uh, so FPGA systems. Um, have you heard about the Analog Mega SG and Super NT? Uh, barely. Well, they're, okay. they're basically like hardware emulators. Like they can play Super Nintendo and Sega games respectively, but they're not made by you know Nintendo and Sega. They're modern systems that use appropriate hardware that does not read the ROM from your cartridge like the the Retrons do, but they actually read the chips like like hardware would. So they're like I like I said, they're not software emulators. They're basically hardware emulators and the mystery oh, project okay. is kind of like various systems like whatever cores you get okay yeah so the the mister is a an open source project uh that has all kinds of cores it, uh, like m previously most fpga based systems had one core uh like meaning uh i can i bought this thing i can play nintendo games on it very accurately um, and with like an HDMI connection and all that stuff. Um, cool. Uh, but this one has like NES. It has uh, all the Sega systems up until uh, um, uh, up until Sega CD. Uh, it has like all kinds of arcade uh, emulation on it. That's way more accurate than Mame. Uh, like it, it, it's like the best form of emulation you can get. It's not even fair to call it emulation, really. Uh, so it, it it's just that good, um, but yeah, this this is a really cool project, and uh, uh, I I just got one myself, but uh, I'm I'm in the process of moving, so I haven't been able to set it up yet. So <laughs> get to it. <laughs> How's the new place? Uh, it is beautiful. I I, I love it. Uh, it's the biggest house I have ever lived in. <laughs> that means so you can have a dog now. We can, uh, and we plan on it. Uh, oh, sweet. we have a cat. Did so. I read your mind or something? Maybe you 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 really uh, read my fiance's mind. Uh, oh, she, she, she <laughs> really mean. really wants a dog. I I I do too, but she really wants a dog. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, but anyway, moving on from that, um, Terra Onion, uh, the makers of the uh, Neo SD project, and also the um, uh, Mega SD project. These are um, you know flash cartridges for the Neo Geo and uh, and Sega Genesis respectively, and they've both both 
made some really good stuff. They also made uh, something for the PC Engine as well that works really well. Uh, they announced that they have a their own Terra Onion Direct uh, coming on April 17th. They've done a Terra Onion Direct before, and that's when they announced the Mega SD, which is currently the best uh, flash card that you could buy for the uh, Genesis. So right. it, it's re- it, nobody has any idea what they're going to announce here. So um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, but they, they tend to botch their their launch <laughs> so, so i definitely would not pre-order it and get it right away they okay. tend to their their first batches tend to be have a flaw of some kind so um, at least they're consistent they are consistent they 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 mess like one thing like a major thing up every single time um so um, except for the, the Neo, the Neo Geo, they they did okay with. Um, but the Mega SD had uh, beveling issues, which isn't a terrible problem, but it's still eh, annoying. Um, that's basically the angling of of the um, circuit board uh, puts a lot of stress on the Genesis when you use it. So okay, uh, they fixed that, um, and they they they. They really botched the the PC Engine thing that they made, uh, and it it took a while before they fixed it up. But um, I'm excited to hear about what they're coming out with either way. And um, Crix, the other leading uh, manufacturer of flash carts, uh, is nearing completion on his Genesis Mega Drive Mega EverDrive Pro. So I'm really looking forward to that and seeing how that compares to the Mega SD. Um, moving on from that, this was just a bit of disappointment. Last of Us 2 um, was indefinitely pos- postponed along with Iron Man uh, VR. Yes, I heard um, about that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Naughty Dog is notorious for uh, crunch as mm-hmm. well, but it <clears throat> seems like uh, the the COVID stuff that's going on um, has delayed their game. Um, they they basically came up with a, with a, a a heartfelt apology, basically saying, "Hey, um, we'll we'll release it when it's ready." But oh, I it, have um, actually have good news about Crunch. Uh, oh, it, it's a practice that's starting to disappear from uh, video game companies. It's dying out. Well, yeah, now really? that everybody's putting them on blast, I hope it is. Yeah, well, yeah. it's it's good. I'm I'm actually kind of yeah. glad that we stop having like just these compressed, ridiculous times. Yeah, maybe Naughty Dog will apologize to its employees too. Uh, well, let's not go overboard here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I would think that like um, eventually there would be some like federal protections against this kind of thing because um, they, they really, really have. Um, uh, this is a really big, big. Problem. I, I just want to In... see every single developer be like, "Well, it's five o'clock, or or what? You know, whatever time. Like, I'm clocking out. Bye. Yeah, your job's over. Yeah. Don't that, announce that... the fucking release date until you know when it's going to be released. It's it's yeah. it's not that easy either because sometimes you do hit like in production you do hit real snags, unpredictable snags. Things oh, absolutely. That, like, so uh, don't announce the release date until you know when it's going to be released. But from a from a like a market stand view standpoint, you you kind of have to announce your games and a release date too. So that's a like a, an well, issue. Look at uh, look at um, uh, CD Projekt Red. We're making a game. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Some well, they're, people can they're pull also it off, but... well known for crunch, so you can't. You can't yeah, use that's them. true. That's true. Uh, but still, they don't announce release dates. It's like five years later. Finally, Cyberpunk. Well, well there there is a um a bit of a good reason for that. I mean, investors deserve to know when the when the product that they're investing in um is coming out. I mean yeah. that that there. So, so, so give a range. Don't don't like kill your employees to squeeze the game out this minute. Yeah, that's well, a, that's a real problem. Well, Reactive Consciousness will be out on April seventh. I, I yeah, know. Reactive Consciousness will be out any any time from April seventh to April twenty seventh. Uh, guys, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna need you to stay an extra five hours to complete oh, this. Oh god, reactive. yeah. Ah, oh, jeez, I gotta edit this in real time. Yeah, and then we need to do Corcon after that. Um, Corcon. Sorry. <laughs> It's like, fine, we're going to need you to draw a new uh, thumbnail, so get on that right now. Yeah, actually, could you do it while we're talking? I'm if you don't have G- anything to say, then just, like, we'll, we'll, we'll just hear the frantic scribbling, like, the, like, the <laughs> sh- 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 of, like, whatever your writing utensil is. Can, 
can you uh, draw old man Stompy, even though he's no lo- longer regularly on the show? Um, <laughs> please, just do that for me, please. And could only my picture please be hyper realistic? Oh God! <laughs> well, I am taking a portrait class actually uh, this week. Oh, nice. Mm. Yes, uh, since, since I have a little bit more free time now because <laughs> of everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking a landscape class. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, it's a shame about left for the uh, left uh, last of us. Yeah, last of us. <laughs> left for us. Left, yeah. left for us. <laughs> left for us too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like this is a highly anticipated game. I I would think that they would all they're also having problems with you know getting physical copies of this one because this is this is of course a big shipped game. Um, yeah, this is a AAA title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the first so, game did um, great. Yeah, I still need to play it. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's very good. Um, oh, I, I'm, I have no doubt. Um, moving on from that, um, Panzer Dragoon remake uh, that was released for Switch actually got a pretty sizable update uh, that had additional, um, uh, additional OST by Sayori uh, Kobayashi. Uh, added uh, sound effects w- rework. Uh, they updated cutscenes. They uh, nice. added additional like UI features, like indicators for uh, enemies being immune for to to certain attacks and things like that balance updates and bug fixes so like mm-hmm. quite a quite a sizable um uh, update and that, that's actually good. noticeable changes yeah nice so for anybody who boots up the game now um you, you should have a, a better playing experience even though like it's been generally really positive so um i'm, I'm looking forward to that um, moving on from that, uh, Dandy Dungeon, which is made, made by Onion Games, uh, the makers of Moon and uh, uh, Blackbird and a few other like off the wall kind of games. Um, um, remind me, was that? Moon was was an RPG, right? It was like a yeah, a... it's like an anti RPG. It's like a like a like a post modern RPG on the PlayStation One. That oh no, never... no, that was Y two K. Got him. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, they made Tulip. They made a, like a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, a lot of quirky, weird games. Yeah, to say the um, least. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, they're going to be releasing Moon in English uh, pretty soon this year, actually. But um, they have a, a really fun game on Switch called Dandy Dungeon right now. And they're giving a sizable update for free for people who already own it uh, called Dandy Jun- Dungeon 2, which is pretty awesome. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, I also had to give a quick shout out here uh, to Hardcore Gaming 101. They just released uh, another book. Um, they they crank out these books really pretty frequently. But yeah. um, I think this is um, one of the first ones in their like normal format that Kurt didn't write himself. This is actually by um, Auden uh, Sorley, and uh, it's wrestling with pixels. Now I'm not a huge wrestling fan, uh, but I like reading about it and I kind of like its distillation. I, I kind of like hearing about it through, uh, through old man Stompy and uh, other people that really love it. But, um, wrestling video games have always kind of fascinated me. Uh, and this actually has, uh, a detailed review of every wrestling video game ever made. That's a lot. Every single one with pictures. Uh, he obviously played uh, like all of the versions of the game, like all the ports. That's insane. Um, That's a lot of games. Yeah. Oh, does it include WWE 2020 with all of its hilarious yes. batitude? Um, it even includes games with real wrestlers in it that are not wrestling games. Oh. Uh, I couldn't think if I could even think of anything like that. Um, well, um... Uh, I think Brawlhalla has some wrestling characters in it. Is it in there? Y- Yakuza. Oh, you know that I think. Oh, duh. Yeah, now nah, Yakuza has New Japan wrestling. Oh, yeah, also, um, also a Bobo's Big Adventure where Hulk Hogan, Randy, uh, not Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and oh no, uh, Ultimate Warrior come in and just wreck uh, Amazon. <laughs> well, get this, Lotus. They even review every wrestling LCD title, like every like Tiger Electronic oh, no. kind of game. <laughs> How do you oh do my that? Every God. single, li- like literally every single electronic 
wrestling game That's that you can think of is in here. How um, the hell? Uh, they, he even did a review of like a pachi slot game based off of a wrestler. Oh uh, my god! Um, pinball tables, like literal pinball tables, based off of uh, wrestling. Wait, um, do they have hybrid heaven in there? What was that? Oh, hybrid. Do they have heaven? hybrid heaven in there. Uh, I don't know. It, it, I bet you it's in here. Um, he even has all of the mobile titles, like from old Java phones and shit. Oh um, my god. How do you like, find like, that stuff? Yeah, like, like there's so much obscure stuff in here. Like I can't, even, I, I, I can't help but read about it because it's just, it's so fascinating. I, I yeah. don't think this is going to count, but they wouldn't have no more heroes in there, would they? Because you do wrestling moves. Um, so he talks about Suda Fifty One quite a bit in this because he, well, yeah, he originated wrestling, from obviously. the Fire Pro Wrestling series. But so... you know, he's got Mask De Smith and Killer Seven and stuff like that. Um, I don't think he has anything with fictional wrestlers in it. Yeah, that might be oh, pushing okay, it too far. Okay. Yeah. Real wrestlers. Uh, he even has like. Um, movies like starring The Rock in here, like, like, just like crazy shit. The like, rundown. <laughs> um, he says like the Scorpion King, Spy Hunter, like oh, video games Scorpion with The King. Rock. Um, video games with The Rock in it that were based off of um, like movies and stuff. Oh, uh, like, so again, the Scorpion King, right? Yeah, yeah. Rampage, uh, Doom. Um, Unreal. Yeah, oh, I like, forgot it was in Doom. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no that's Sarge. Idware, not Unreal. Um, that's Idware, not Unreal. Nicely done. But yeah, he yep. was Sarge in, in Doom 3, the movie. Yeah, no, he has like all kinds of stuff in here. He even has a section about uh, Suburban Commando. <laughs> Does he have <laughs> like, um, Hulk Hogan's cameo in Baywatch? I don't think so. Um, but there... <laughs> There's just, like, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, Wait, do they have the Super Mario Super Show, then? Uh, you, you know what? Captain Alu Obana might be in here somewhere. Um, oh, I forgot about that. I was thinking the cartoon part. I was like, I don't get no, it. No, no, no. Captain Lou Obana yeah, uh, was a wrestler. Um, oh, yeah, wait a minute. I'll, I'll have to um, look further into it. What, what about G.I. Joe with Sergeant Slaughter? They have Sergeant Slaughter here and his oh. various exploits. Um, wait, and the Princess Bride even... is in there, too? Uh, I don't know about that, but, um, you know, because that, that that would be a good one because Andre the Giant's in there. Um, yeah. There's, oh, there's all Brown, kinds yeah. of stuff in here, though, and hey, he even goes over, like, all kinds of games that are Japan only. Do they have um, BattleBot, or not BattleBot, do they have Robot Wars with Mick Foley? I, you know what? Um, this, Yo, he was that the stuff shit. might all be in here, but who knows? But uh, That's pretty neat, honestly. That actually sounds really interesting. It's, it's really cool. It's extremely interesting, even though I have no intention of playing any of these games. I love yeah, reading about actually, it. Yeah, actually, you know, you got my attention with all that. This sounds fascinating. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, really, really, really good. Comprehensive study. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like... It, it's so fascinating. I might pick up a game or two, but I just like reading about it and the evolution of it. like he does it in t- in in chronological order too. So like you could see sure. how the games evolve over time and how they play mm-hmm. off of each other. So it's really so really. He's cool. got the Sega Genesis WWF game with IRS's theme, which is just it's not his actual theme, but on the Genesis is just a million keys typing sounds with like the <laughs> ka-ching, like you move the the spool in the typewriter. <laughs> that's his that's his music in the genesis just tick 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 it's not even to wow. a rhythm it's just typing sounds it's really funny <laughs> um i i also wanted to uh throw out a couple other plugs just because these are cool things that happened um i have you checked out gorilla sound machine uh lotus yeah i've seen a couple of episodes of that it's just like phone conversations that eventually lead into like the next video is like a song with a person they were talking to and it's pretty interesting so they just released a new sound machine like i think yesterday so like oh get ready for something more i think yeah so uh there 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 were two so far but i guess that's a third one but um yeah i think so uh so this is basically their new album um uh, yeah this is is... how you do it you release it piecemeal on youtube kind of like um what they did with humans i think yeah so they're but this is how they're selling it basically uh you 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 can buy um, you could buy the if you want to listen to them uh, like on your your cell phone or your iPod. What you could do is you could buy like these two dollar chunks, and they give you like a couple skits, uh, like you know the phone yeah. calls that you're talking about, and then yeah, the actual I mean. songs that they're putting out. But they're basically only releasing um, singles. Like they're really catchy. Uh, the first two are really yeah. good. 
The second um, one took me a bit to get into, but like once it really got going, I was feeling it. Uh, Momentary Bliss it might be one of their best songs. It's really, really, really good. Uh, mm-hmm. I really like Momentary Bliss. Um, but is that the uh, one we're on the the jet ski? No, Mo- Momentary Bliss is the uh, the first one. Um, there. Okay, it, yeah, the, I did the, like that one. Yeah, the sound the, studio. The, 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 the jet ski was the one that I was like, I don't know, but I, 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 I eventually got into the groove. It's really good. Yeah, the second one's called Desole. It's actually um, in part, partly in French. Um, yeah. And it's actually pretty cool because uh, 2D is known to be like a stupid character. They they like he's not very smart. Um, like that's and he's very timid. Uh, he's that's like part of his character. Yeah. Um, and and people were like, oh, uh, and I was like, he could speak French. And he, yeah. <laughs> he, he, later on in the video, um, uh, later on the video, they have him like looking up phrases out of a French book while he's singing. <laughs> it's it's great. really funny. <laughs> well, now I'm curious. So, I'm... You don't know what he's saying, right? So maybe I could translate. Um, I do not. So uh, I I would enjoy a translation. Um, yeah. So, but it, it both songs have been good. I I don't know about the third one, obviously, because I didn't even know that happened yet. Well, the third um, one doesn't exist yet. Uh, it's just oh, the, I thought the, you it's, said it's just, it was no, it's just the phone call sketch. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, they're probably leading up to a third one, but um, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. give give some uh, context, uh, a Damon Auburn said after now now that Gorillas was going away. <laughs> And then a year later, he's doing this. He's <laughs> so, with us. I mean, they no, went away, and then so. they came back. I guess. I don't think so. I think he's very volatile. Um, mm. Oh, okay. Like he gets in fights with people, uh, including uh, Jamie Hewitt, which is the other half of Gorillas. Um, mm. So, like, I, I think, but eventually he keeps coming back because that's his active band. I guess yeah. it's just mm. like his bread and butter, and so he has to get along with people um in order to make this happen but he it's such an experimental thing that he, he like every song yeah. sounds radically different and is great um so and this time this time it's not even like album consistency this time like the the first two songs just are totally different as well yeah Can I say that making good songs consistently is incredibly hard by the way and it's and like a different freaking genre each different. time. Yeah, they're all radically different. Yeah, uh, it's like, really like there's crazy. generally album consistency. You could probably tell if a song is from Plastic Beach, but like Plastic Beach sounds nothing like Demon Days. Sounds nothing like Humans. It's freaking Plastic wild. Beach sounds more like their original album than it does like Demon Days. Um, yeah. yeah, like it. Like they go through phases. It's kind of funny. Um, hu- yeah. Humans, humans had like a, a really dark edge to it, um, and oh, now yeah. now had a lighthearted edge to it. it, it yeah, the it, now now was a total turnaround. Like humans with Let Me Out, that was one of their darker pieces. I can think it's great. And Hallelujah it, Money was just super cynical. Um, yeah. but the now now like that their first song, which is just like two D, just roller skating down like the boardwalk and having a great time yeah 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 um my, my my favorite story is um like while he was making humans he was just like okay imagine a world where donald trump got a re- elected yep. <laughs> and and this go. is the world we're basing this on <laughs> yep oh. and he was right <laughs> he's just like imagine that dark world and then it happened <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. this is thanks <laughs> Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, this is one that you wanted to throw out there, uh, Lotus. I'll let you uh, get to it. Yeah, there's there's a couple things I wanted to mention, but one yeah. of them was that this past Thursday would have been Toshiro Mifune's 100th birthday. And Toshiro Mifune, I had to look up the name, even though I've actually seen his face before. He is kind of like Japanese Clint Eastwood. He was the star of a few um, Akira Kurosawa movies, like... Um, like I think like Rashomon, um, great movie. Yo, Yojimbo, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about. Was he in Seven Samurai? I'm gonna look him up right now. Yeah, but but anyway, like I saw a post about this on Facebook, but by coincidence, I happened to turn on TV, and you know, like on the TV Guide channel, Turner Classic Movies had a bunch of like Kurosawa movies in a row. I, I missed Rashomon, unfortunately, but I was just in time for. That's Yojimbo. not how I remember it. Yeah, it's funny every time. But uh but I but like I happened to be just in time for uh Yojimbo though, and I'd never seen it before. And it really was like I think Kurosawa himself said 
it's basically like a Japanese Western. Like, stranger, we don't know his name, comes into town, settles some dispute with violence, saves somebody, leaves. Who was well, that guy? I don't know. He sure helped fit- us out. Fistful of Dollars is based off of Yojimbo. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, it's interesting because I've, like, my brother has lent me a million Usagi Yojimbo comics, and a lot of them pay homage to previously existing Japanese uh, folklore or pop culture or whatever. Like, there's there's a goat and his child, and they call them Goat and Kid, and it's based on the novel series Wolf and Cub, stuff like that. <laughs> Wolf and uh, well, they're... Goat and Kid, I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a kid. But uh, there was this one story arc where these two rival merchants, who are both douchebags, constantly want the other dead. And each of them has a bunch of hired goons, and they want to kill each other, but they never really getting around to doing it. Maybe there'll be like a murder here and there of one of the goons, and it's like, oh man, this town's going to hell for all of us who aren't part of these gangs. And so Usagi and his friend Gen come in, and they both want to solve the situation. Usagi, because it's the right thing to do. Gen, because he knows he'll get money out of it. So... <laughs> He tells Usagi to become a hired hand of one of the merchants, and Gan will become the hired hand of the other, and they'll both just turn people on each other. That was basically the movie Yojimbo. I didn't realize it at the time. Uh, except in Yojimbo, he's just by himself. So, like, he just goes up and kills three guys like it's nothing, gets himself hired under one of the merchants, but then he overhears the merchant and his wife conspiring to kill him after the war's over, or the, the battle's over, because they don't want to pay him the incredibly high price he's asked so he's like all right well fuck you guys and he gives them their (laughs) money back and he's like i guess i'm working for the other guy now they're like oh shit and the other guy's like oh actually so it kind of keeps going back and forth like that and he tries instigating a war so both sides will just murder each other and then he walks away with the payment but he also secretly has a heart of gold and is trying to save this person who's in trouble it's a solid movie it's it's really entertaining and the whole thing is just like one set like on a street, and it's in like this. It's like inside a building, like once or twice. It's it's a it's well done. It's it's nice. beautiful in simplicity. Um, this I think it has a um, Yojimbo has uh, Akira Kurosawa's only only sequel, as far as I can tell, uh, oh. as well. Sanjiro. Uh, so definitely oh, check that out. I need to out. see that one. Sanjiro accidentally introduced the anime trope of slashing a guy, and gallons of blood come out, like in Kill Bill. That was in Sanjiro. Yeah. And it was an accident. Yeah, I have the guy like gonna say. Ray. Yeah, he like cut the water hose too much and it goes spraying out. Um I've I've actually seen that particular scene. It was this epic standoff. It was like a gun duel. You know, they both just stand there and wait and finally they both draw. In this it was that with swords. So they were gonna have it. Like they actually had because Kurosawa knew we can only do this in one take. You can't just redo this and lose the magic of the moment. So do it right. So, like, both actors were practicing their sword drawing and striking. And so when you finally see the scene, it really is pretty cool. Like, the opponent draws the sword the traditional way, where he draws it up and then grabs it with the other hand and slashes downward like a samurai strike. Whereas um, Mifune drew in an untraditional manner. Like, his, his sheath is on his right, and he reaches out... He grabs the sword with his left hand and whips it out horizontally and takes his right hand on the back of the blade once it's out and helps push it so it goes a little faster. It's it's a pretty wicked fast strike, but tons of blood, but, you know, water. It's a black and white movie. Tons of blood comes gushing out, and the people watching the duel have real looks of surprise. Like, well, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, but Kurosawa's like, oh shit, I'm keeping that because it looks like they're impressed with his quick draw, which nice. it really was a quick draw. So it's a cool scene. You could easily look it up. Just Sanjiro, like, duel or whatever. It'll come up. It's like it's like a one-and-a-half, two-minute video that's mostly build-up. And when you finally see the strike, you're like, oh, shit. Like, it's pretty great. If, if you Even if you look past the blood, if you just look at the actual strike technique, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he literally uh, stars in all of all of Akira Kurosawa's, like, best-known films. Uh, Rashomon, okay. um, uh, Yojimbo, Sanjiro. Yeah, he has that grizzled look. It's great. He he he, oh. he looks like Gen from Usagi Yojimbo. He's this grizzled five o'clock shadow samurai badass. Uh, he's in Seven Samurai as well. He uh, so man. like he he's he's in all the big ones. Uh, yeah. So uh, he his his legacy is definitely like he's uh, a, a fucking really badass. Thing. He's also in Hidden Fortress, which um, yeah, the like, Star Wars movie. Star Wars is based off of uh, basically. 
Um, so like, way, he's a, all of all he he's in all of his best known films. By the way, one thing I should point out, which I find kind of funny, is that in the comic series Usagi Ojimbo, I figure like there is some violence in there, but it's not brutal. Same goes for Yojimbo. There's a little blood sometimes to get the point across, but it's not like a gore fest. Yeah. yeah. But in in the comics, I figure because it's generally generally family friendly, like a lot of characters, like no name characters, are exaggerated. Like a sleazy corrupt cop who's just like, oh, I'll overlook this if you pay me a little bit. Or like you'll have merchants like you think you're, or like the the merchants gamblers. You think you're so tough, you better think twice before coming to our place, buddy, and like stuff like that. But that's just how it is in the movie, too. They're, like, these goofy stereotype characters. It's amazing. Like, one of the first antagonists you see approaches the coffin maker, who's the only guy making any money lately because people are killing each other. Yep. Um, that That's also a trope in uh, a lot of other um, Western movies yeah. as well. And yeah. this is, like, the, the big dumb guy of the movie. And he's like, how are things going? And the coffin maker's like, well, two of your guys got killed. And he's like, what? And he's like, but four guys got killed on the other side and the guy takes out his fingers and starts counting them comparing two and four and eventually it's like oh, okay good it's like <laughs> really it's like stuff like that uh, one thing i did like though was that much later in the movie where the violence is really escalating the coffin maker is miserable and the guy's name isn't yojimbo he doesn't have a name but yojimbo means bodyguard it's not even a name but i'll just call him yojimbo and he just um He's just like, well, what's your problem, coffin maker guy? This should be the best time in the world for you. And the coffin maker's like, nah, man. When the violence gets this bad, they don't even bother with coffins anymore. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, it's freaking amazing. It's a solid movie. Yeah. I recommend it. Absolutely, really great. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Rashomon as well. So, um, uh, and and Seven Samurai. So, definitely look these up. These these yeah, are all like films that all of your favorite films were based off of. <laughs> yeah, like, like this was literally. my first Kurosawa movie, so like I certainly want to see more. Yeah, uh Seven Samurai is like considered like his greatest triumph. Uh you should definitely definitely mm -hmm. watch that. Um all of them are amazing, so uh definitely definitely seek sure, them out. Sure. Um, moving on from that, uh, this I just thought this was pretty cool. I, I mentioned this to Lotus earlier this week, but there's a new streaming service um, out oh, called yes. Retro Crush. Um, this was uh, really pretty neat. Uh, so this this is on uh, this is an app. So unfortunately, you can't watch it from a desktop. Uh, you can watch it from a phone, uh, laptop, or uh, like a uh, set top device, like a, a Roku or. Um, or an Android, um, you know, set top box or an Apple set top box. Um, it may even be on some consoles eventually, but um, Retro Crush is really cool. Um, it has free uh, content. It's all ad driven uh, of all old classic animes. Um, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. Like um, I think Captain Harlock's in there. Um, oh, that's a good uh, one. Fist of the North Star, like all the episodes. Um, uh, it even has like the Street Fighter 2 movie, which yeah. is, is pretty oh, awesome. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. The 90s uh, movie. They they have the Virtua Fighter anime. Oh, <laughs> it was no. an anime on Virtua Fighter. Wow. Yeah, there was. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, um, do they have Samurai but, Showdown, which apparently is also terrible? I've never seen. Uh, I I didn't I think see it was that. Called Samurai but... Spirits. Like, like the biggest things that they have are they they have like Bubblegum Crisis on all of like the yeah. spinoffs. Um, they have. Uh, Cobra Space Adventure. Oh, um, well, their Devil Lady. Jeez, there's like a whole bunch of really good stuff. Black. I can't Jackal. believe they made an anime after the Sega CD Space Adventure game. <laughs> um. Galgo Thirteen, the movie oh, Galaxy Express Nine Nine Nine. Um, yeah, I'm working on that series. That's a very depressing show, but <laughs> it's good. Huh. Yeah, so there, there's some really good stuff. Um, I think Macross... No, no, Macross is on uh, Amazon right now. But, um, yeah, just really good stuff, and it's free. Why, like, why not? Yeah. Um, and there's some really good, like, um, like cult hits in there. Like, I was watching Robot Carnival, which is, like, a, a an OVA of, like, really amazing, like, animation. It's, it's like, it's kind of like um, uh, a... a um, anthology an anthology yeah i was just gonna say that um i was looking for that word an anthology of of different animations put together and it's really cool 
Very nice. Uh, um, they even have uh, this. Uh, they even have uh, the, the uh, Otaku no Video for the guy Nexus first uh, animation. Oh, sure. Yeah, I finally yeah. saw that one year at Otacon because they always open and close their convention with it each year. It's worth yeah. a watch. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty cool. Also, you know, shows like the first project that the Evangelion guys and all that other stuff, um, you know, yeah. before they they were Gynex, they were they were doing that, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, did did you have anything about WrestleMania? That you yeah, real briefly. I mean, I am not old man Stompy. I am not going to be able to <laughs> go into the detail justice. that he can. But yeah, no way. But <laughs> I wanted to point out that I have enjoyed the the sketches of Bray Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse, where he just shows his fucked up workings of his mind in yeah, a it was, twisted it was children's tv show catching bits of that like what's it's, going on with that it's good well the thing is you know how various wrestlers just eventually like their identity kind of gets tired so they just take up a new identity yeah you know like you know mick foley i mentioned before he's mankind he's cactus well, this jack, is cactus jack. Yeah. Uh, you know stuff like that it's a different character but it's the same guy you know yeah. so like bray wyatt got his ass beat by john cena in i i think it might have been wrestlemania like six years ago and like more recently, he's just I like re uh, reinvented himself as this just fucked up like never got over it like person. Like, but but the thing is, again, he shows up in like a Blues Clues looking children's TV show, but it's there's clearly something off about it, and he's not right in the head. And this whole thing might be in his head. I don't know. Who knows? You know, stuff like that. And it's, like, one of the more fascinating aspects of wrestling, like, to a lot of wrestling fans. And certainly to me, because I don't care about the actual wrestling. And yeah. he has this um, this alternate personality called The Fiend, where he dresses up in this creepy suit and he's got a mask on and everything. All the wrestlers <laughs> are like, fuck you, you're just wearing a mask, you're stupid. But, like, it, it may or may not be another personality of his, that kind of thing. Um, so the thing is, you know, we've been talking about... Not this week, but the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about things that have had to happen um, because of setbacks, because of the uh, the coronavirus. But what happened in this WrestleMania is something that could only have existed because of the coronavirus. It was pre-taped and all that. Yeah, yeah it was pre-taped, which means they can do stuff do that you would want. never be able to do live because there's, you know, there's no audience there. They can, they can basically do like the, the Ed Hardy stuff kind of uh, that they you know they used to do on on youtube and all that stuff yeah yeah so like they had bray wyatt challenge john cena to a match in wrestlemania and it was bizarre it became this like existential thing where john cena like reawakened in his old clothes where he was a heel and being a jerk because you know how john cena is all about like positivity and like overcoming your yeah, obstacles he, he's and... also like a very straight character um he's yeah. a baby face that really doesn't deviate his message exactly. doesn't really deviate his exactly. character doesn't deviate yeah and bray wyatt's like fuck you. you used to be a heel you're just as much of an asshole as any of us you just cover it up and like they were doing this like this this meta thing because a lot of Bray Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse is meta, which I would never have understood without Old Man Stompy's <laughs> input. So like there there like he challenged John Cena to a Firefly Funhouse match, and John Cena's like I don't know what that means. Nobody I ask tells me what that means. I question whether Bray Wyatt himself knows what that means. But it it was just like a thing that you could not have possibly filmed live because it was just like costume changes and stuff like that in like weird like hard special cuts and stuff. Special effects and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Special effects, kind of, but they're, they're referencing, like, the NWO and stuff like that. It, it, it was, like, it, it's just interesting to watch. It was less of a wrestling match and more of a skit during WrestleMania, which feels kind of weird. It was just interesting to me. And a lot of people were also talking about Undertaker versus AJ Styles. I don't know as much about that, but apparently, Old Man Stompy said it was, like, the best Undertaker's been in, like, four or five years, which is pretty great, like, on wrestling. Apparently his match ended with going in for a hug and a handshake for AJ Styles, but then he, like, kicks him into an open grave and buries him there with, like, construction equipment. It's like, what? <laughs> um, so apparently WrestleMania was pretty wild. It just sounds amusing. Again, I don't care about the actual wrestling, but this lore stuff is pretty interesting. <laughs> Especially Bray Wyatt stuff, which is just like, whoa. So it's just what, what little I managed to see was pretty fun. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, do either of you have any other things to reiterate or go over uh, before we bring the uh, show to a close here? Yeah, uh, I think the uh, Nintendo Direct we were talking about was from 2019. 
switch on everything? Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Everything's on switch now. Well, the only other thing I'll mention, this is a real quickie regarding the coronavirus. I hadn't thought about it until I got an email about it, but it makes a lot of sense. If you get physical checks to deposit in your ATM, um, if you have a smartphone and the app, then I recommend that you deposit your checks digitally by scanning them. Do not go into that small enclosed space that everybody and their mother uses to deposit checks in the ATM. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's it. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, anybody else uh, have anything else to say? Nope. Nah, I'm out. Okay. That is the show for this week. Please remember to subscribe to the Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us love five-star ratings on iTunes. And... It always helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for our sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, where we'll have a wonderful show about Night Dive Studios this week. Uh, now, uh, finally, you can friend me as Visible on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, and whatever else. <laughs> you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on... Uh, Twitter at at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, or getting in discussions with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. And you can find my YouTube channel under Facathon. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Lou Facathon. That's L-O-U-P Facathon. Because, you know, put the P at the end. It's French. It's stupid. <laughs> Uh, I also put the P at the end. <laughs> Let's put some random consonants. You won't need them. Yeah, I'll just put an E there, a T, an H, whatever. It's cool. X's, X's everywhere. Oh, <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> and I also draw a webcomic. Uh, it's a Kajula Chan, which you can find on the internet, and it's also on Webtoon. Sounds great. All right, everybody. We will catch everybody on Thursday for another episode of Corcon. Until next time, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs>